Hello everyone, I'm MVL and in this video I'm going to show you how to add Famicom Disk System support to your Retro Freak. The Retro Freak is a fantastic system that emulates a ton of different retro gaming consoles and if you want to know more about this system you can check out a video I did about this previously on my channel. This is really useful to me because it does a ton of different consoles from different regions and outputs the gameplay footage via HDMI so it's really useful for recording like that. And because it does so many systems, I actually suspect that Cyber Gadget may have originally intended this to support Famicom Disk System originally, which is why it's so easy to add support, which I'm going to show you how to do on this video. But you may be wondering, how do I add Famicom Disk System support to this because there's no ports to add the floppy disk to that and whilst there are extra peripherals like the Retro Freak adapter here to add NES games and uh, you could also use the Master System Converter to add Master System games and they also did, Retro Freak also did a adapter to add Game Gear and other Sega games to this. There's no actual way to add the floppy disk from the Famicom Disk System Drive to this but one of the big advantages the Retro Freak has over something like the Retron 5, other than PC Engine and TurboGrafx-16 support, which I actually think is a really big deal, is that you can rip the ROM files from cartridges to this, and you can also put ROM files on a tiny SD card on this thing and uh, play the games from that as well. And that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be adding the BIOS file to the SD card and we're going to be adding the games on as well. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that because you have to rename the BIOS file and uh, add them to particular places and folders. And I'm going to show you how to do that on this video. Now, uh, before we get started, I'm going to take out the uh, tiny SD card. And I want to say that one of the tiny flaws of this system is the um, SD card slot is sort of spring-loaded and I have previously taken out the SD card and it jettisoned far and wide away from me before and I've almost lost it a couple of times. So I recommend when you take out the SD card from this device that you point it towards yourself and be very gentle with it. And there we go, nothing got lost this time. And there's that tiny SD card right here and we're going to add the BIOS file and the games to that. So let's do that right now. The first thing you are going to need is a BIOS file. You can find this very easily from a website search engine. Once you have that, go into your SD card and into the RetroFreak folder and then create a folder named BIOS. In that folder you'll want to dump your Famicom Disk System BIOS and rename it to DiskSYS.ROM. You may need to capitalize this to get it to work, but for me it worked fine in lower case. I'll add that the renaming of this file in my instance changed the file type from a .bin to a .rom, but that didn't seem to affect anything and it still worked for me. Your Famicom Disk System ROMs will go in the game folder where you'd put other ROM files. When you turn on your Retro Freak after the SD card has loaded up, you can find these ROM files with the rest of your Famicom and NES games in that section of the Retro Freak. Here I have a ROM file for Aliens, which was a prototype Famicom Disk System game that was never released. As you can see this game works, one thing you may have to do is swap discs during a game if the game asks you to do that, which this game does. To do this you simply press the Start and Options buttons at the same time by default, but you can also change the button mapping for this as well if you would like to. Once you've done that, you can start the game. And you can see here that this game is a platformer and it's something I would have never been able to experience outside of emulation as this was a prototype game. This game is really awesome and it's a treat to be able to play it. It's also cool for me as someone in the UK to be able to collect Famicom Disk System games without having to get the hardware that would be more difficult to get to run on UK power and televisions. This way I can just worry about picking up the game discs and not worry too much about getting working hardware. One last thing that I'd like to make you aware of is that the game file will remember which side of the disc you were last using. So if you boot up the game and it has the wrong side currently in use, the game will not start. This is very easy to sort out. You just press the button combination to switch the size of the disc. By default, this is start and options, and then the game will load up fine. 
So there you have it, that is how you add Famicom Disk System game support to your Retro Freak. If you like this video, please leave a like or a comment to let me know what you think, and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome content. And if you'd like to, you can also support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership. Thank you for watching, I've been MVL, and I will catch you next time.